Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, the best game cocks podcast on the internet. Today is Friday, October the 8th, 2021. Today's show, I lock in my official prediction as the game cocks look for their first SEC win of the 2021 football season as they head to Rocky Top, Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, to take on Josh Heupel's Tennessee Volunteers in a matchup of first year head coaches. Guys, we got a packed show, got a fun one here on a Friday, and it's all brought to you by our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, Upstate Movers Group, superior moving service. They bring care and attention that the companies can't offer because they're just too busy maintaining trucks and profiting off of them instead of focusing on service. Guys, service is what separates Upstate Movers Group from the competition. They're not a trucking company, they're a moving services company, and they're also employee owned co op. The movers are paid twice the industry average, and everyone on the crew is invested in your success. They have dedicated professional crew members, and they also offer black glove service. They offer end-to-end packing services, custom crating and packaging special items, and cleaning services as well. They're founded by Greenville Natives and University of South Carolina alumni guys, so a Gamecock owned small business. They also offer 20 years of project management moving experience, and they can offer logistics and solutions that traditional moving companies simply do not have the skills for. Guys, whether in the upstate or across the state of South Carolina. If you have any moving needs in 2021, be sure to check out our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. You can find them on social media at Upstate Movers Group. Of course, if you have any other questions, go to their website, upstatemoversgroup.com. That's upstatemoversgroup.com. Be sure to check them out and tell them Chris from the Spurs Up show sent you. Let's get it. Boys and girls, happy Friday. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Chris Phillips, Tristan Spurs Up Show, as always. Appreciate you all tuning in, guys. We have got a packed show. Of course, it is Prediction Friday, as I lock in my official prediction for tomorrow's game, as the Gamecocks travel to Knoxville to take on the Tennessee Volunteers. Guys, a lot to get to. Very excited, fired to be chatting with you here on this Friday. Let me start by saying this. I loathe the University of Tennessee. I loathe the color orange, not just the balls, but every team that wears it. And I thank God, folks, that we can sit here on a Friday and not have to wear that gaudy orange like they referenced in that one movie that one time. Great day to have a day. Great day to have a Friday, folks. Again, appreciate you all tuning in. Like I said, going to lock in my official score prediction. Before we do that, though, guys, a quick reminder. If you're not going to the game in Knoxville and you're a low country Gamecock and you're hearing the sound of my voice, head on out to Carolina Ale House tomorrow afternoon. We'll be down in the Somerville location, taking in the game, watching the Gamecocks take on the balls. Also, if you do show up, guys, let them know you're with TSUS. You're going to get 10% off. Your entire order, that's food, that's drink, anything you order. Again, appreciate Carolina Ale House for taking care of our people. But again, be sure to mention you're with TSUS. And again, guys, all the details for the watch party in Somerville, South Carolina can be found on social media. So again, really, really excited for this, guys. I know a bunch of you have confirmed that you will be coming. And I'm really looking forward to getting down there again, partying with some low country Gamecocks. Doors will open at 11. Kickoff is at noon. And really, really excited to hang out with and party with each and every single one of you. Going to be a great time. Again, guys, before we get going to, thank you all so much for the continued love and support, guys. You know, it's crazy. As you make content, these weeks just fly by. Like, I'm sure you guys know, again, the football season, it's crazy how quickly it comes and goes, if you will. But I just want to say thank you to you all for another successful week. You guys, you know, you may not know this, but you guys really motivate and inspire me to keep pushing, keep grinding, keep going. You know, without, without the, 
the fans of the show and the supporters and the people who rock with us and rock what we do. Um, again, TSUS guys, it wouldn't be what it is. You guys are truly the engine that makes this thing go. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your continued love and support, guys. And again, I hope this show finds you well on a Friday, no matter where you are, what you're doing, whether you're on the commute, you're in the office, you're on the job, you got the day off. Maybe you're on fall break. Who knows? But again, folks, again, thank you all so much for your love and support. And I appreciate each and every single one of you for tuning in. Folks, with that being said, let's get right to it. My prediction, South Carolina, Tennessee, can the Gamecocks get their first SEC win of the 2021 season? And guys, I'll start here. This is something that sort of came up on Thursday. I did not talk about it on yesterday's podcast. But a question I want to pose to not just you all, but everyone that will have an eye on this football game tomorrow. Who do you think this game is more important for? You got a pair of first-year head coaches in Shane Beamer and Josh Heupel and what they're building at their respective programs. And to call any game a quote-unquote must-win in year one of a new head coach is, I think, far too aggressive, and it's a bit foolish, to be honest with you. It's a bit foolish. Now, if you want to talk must-win to hit a certain goal or a win total, fine, I see it. But year one of building a program, there are not quote-unquote must-win games. But I wonder in this football game tomorrow, who has more pressure to come out victorious at Neyland Stadium? Who would it more benefit and more hinder in year one, depending the result of this football game? Again, you look at the South Carolina side of things, and I think we all are very aware of and understand the rebuilding job, the task that was at hand when Shane Bieber took the job and all, all the turmoil that came with that. And then you look at Tennessee, you talk about turmoil. My goodness, guys. I mean, I, I remember doing the opponent preview series and talking about Tennessee. And, you know, we knew their roster was depleted. We knew they had issues. But then you started to go look and you're like, bro, they lost everybody. I think they had like 35 guys or 37 guys hit the, hit the transfer portal or leave or what have you. Things are rocky on rocky top, no pun intended. But, uh, you know, I, I wonder – who is this a bigger game for? Again, both teams are three and two. Both teams, obviously, in year one fighting for bowl eligibility. And I think this can certainly be looked at not as a must-win game, but a swing game for both of these schools. So it's obviously massively important. You also think of just the history and the tradition of this series and how back and forth it's been and how close it's been. I know Tennessee's won two in a row on you, but these games seem to always have something wacky, come down to the wire. We've seen upsets. We've seen games that don't make any sense. We've seen game-winning field goals. This South Carolina Tennessee series, especially over the last decade or so, has really had it all. And there was a time, guys, not too long ago, right? Because Tennessee football, let's call it for what it is, they haven't been relevant on a national scale in nearly two decades. I mean, truly, it's been that long. I mean, the recruits of today, they don't know good Tennessee football because it hasn't existed. That's just the facts. That's just the facts. But I take you back to a time when Steve Spurrier was roaming the sidelines at the University of South Carolina. And the Gamecocks were really dominating or beating, I should say, Tennessee on a year-in, year-out basis. Again, this is something else I didn't talk about on yesterday's show, but this is a huge game, I think, for the Gamecocks, guys, because of this. You're trying to build this program back, right? And, and each win can be looked at as a building block. Again, there are no must wins in year one. But for a while, you surpassed Tennessee as a program. When people looked at the SEC East, it was Georgia, Florida, South Carolina. Not Tennessee was that other team. And so the Vols have won two in a row against you. And People, I know Gamecock fans get very, very upset with the quote-unquote disrespect that South kind of gets, and we don't get the credit they do, and this, that. Well, guys, it's because Tennessee has tradition. That's why. They're always going to get more benefit of the doubt than you get. That's just a fact, right? And so in this series, I think for people to change people's minds that, hey, we're ahead of this program, right? We're ahead of these guys. South Carolina's got to win two or three in a row, in my opinion, against Tennessee to really make people buy into that and believe that, hey, the Gamecocks are ahead of the Bulls. On the contrary, Tennessee wins one game against South Carolina. Oh, Tennessee's automatically a better program. Is it unfair? Absolutely, but it's just the way things happen. Now, where this game falls on the schedule for these two teams, and again, back to my point, by the way, before I get off that, 
SEC East hierarchy. I talked about that a lot over the summer and where the Gamecocks currently rank right now. If you can beat a team like Tennessee, all of a sudden, maybe people are looking at Shane Beamer saying, hey, you're ahead of schedule. This program is in a little bit better shape than we thought it was, right? And Tennessee, same thing. If Tennessee, obviously, they're trying to get back to what they once were and competing for the SEC East and trying to win SEC championships, this is a game they need to have. Bottom line, this is a game they need to win, right? But you look on the field in this one, guys, and you know what's really surprised me is the amount of people that are picking these huge inflated scores and are picking Tennessee to score 30, 40, 50 points. Guys, do you realize that South Carolina has allowed just one team this season to score more than 17 points against them? And that was, by the way, oh, no big deal, just the Georgia Bulldogs, who I think is probably the best team in all of college football. Yes, that includes Alabama. So this defense has been week in, week out your calling card. And so win or lose, I don't think you're going to see South Carolina's defense just get run all over. I understand what Tennessee has done offensively to this point. I understand, and again, I told you guys on Wednesday, it's a classic overreaction to what the balls did against Mizzou. Guys, let me go ahead and put it out there. There's no freaking way Tennessee plays that well again. There's no way. There's no way they play that well. I'm almost glad Tennessee had the performance they did against Mizzou last week. I'm almost glad because there's just no way you can sustain that for two weeks in a row, right? So I think defensively, you know, I was someone, again, I spent the entire preseason questioning the defense and being weary of the defense. And Clayton White has made me a believer. Is this an elite defense? That might be a little bit strong. I don't think they're like the best defense in the SEC or anything, but I fully expect this defense to do what it's done all season long. Give you an opportunity to win. Force a couple of turnovers. Put your offense in good position. The question will be this. Can you convert those opportunities into touchdowns? Not just points, but touchdowns. Touchdowns. So defensively, I'm a believer. I I think your defense will show up, guys. I I really think, again, Clayton White will have a fantastic game plan prepared. I know Tennessee has been good offensively. Also, look at who they've played. Um, But you look at Tyon Evans for them, the running back, and obviously they got a couple of really capable wide receivers. And then Hooker, their quarterback's a pretty solid player, the transfer out of uh, Virginia Tech, if you will. So it'll be a great test. And as some of you brought up, you know, some people have said, well, Chris, you know, we've been run through by everybody we played. And I look back at the stats and I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, Kentucky ran for 200 and something yards and this team ran for that. But it's just really hard for me to be harsh on the Gamecocks defense when they've been doing what they've been doing this season, they're giving you every opportunity to win the football game. And the question moving to South Carolina's offense is, will you be able to do enough offensively to get the job done? Again, it's about converting into touchdowns, not field goals, touchdowns. It's inexcusable for your defense to give you the football on the opponent's 30, 40, and not be able to capitalize. I talked about Luke Doty yesterday on the show. Great opportunity for a young quarterback to get a statement win, right? Is this the week the running game gets going? Is there any hope left for the Gamecocks offensive line? What do they give you? Because I'll tell you this, guys, after re-watching Troy, and I know I've been very harsh on this football team in regards to, you know, the talent, lack thereof, what you're working with. But there are some talented football players on this team. I think offensively, you do have some pieces to, you're not going to be an elite offense. You're, you're missing too much. There's too many things you need, and you need to go get better players in a lot of areas. But you have enough, in my mind, between guys like Josh Van, Jaheim Bell, Nick Muse, EJ Jenkins, Jalen Brooks, you know, maybe a Dak Joiner. Obviously, your entire running back room. I think you have enough. Also, by the way, a continuing to get healthier and healthier and healthier Luke Doty. I think you have enough to have a competent offense, which again is not anything world beaters, but a competent offense. With that being said, guys, again, this game, this is a series, like I told you guys, that has been, you know, just so interesting. Um, In regards to when these two teams match up, weird things happen. Very strange things happen. And Neyland Stadium has been a house of horrors. 
for the University of South Carolina. It's been tough sledding. It really has. It's been very tough there. I mean, you think about it. What, you've only won, you lost in 19, you lost in 15. You did win in 2017, which you might recall that game. That's the game that uh, South Carolina won 15 to nine and had a goal line stop at the end of the game to secure that one, which I don't know if I've ever been more sick to my stomach watching a Gamecocks game, just thinking to myself, because that you're thinking, oh my God, we're going to lose. Oh my God, we're going to lose. And all of a sudden you won the football game somehow, some way. But it's like every single year, it seems this is a field goal game, like at most a touchdown game. This has been a very, very competitive series. So when I saw the line initially come out of Tennessee as a 12-point favorite, I was surprised. And listen, guys, I'm not sitting here telling you that South Carolina is, you know, something they're not. I'm not trying to set unrealistic expectations for you for the rest of the season, but Tennessee is also not all that either. Let's not lose sight of the problems that the Volunteers have just because they went out and demolished a really, really bad Mizzou team. Mizzou has got a slew of issues, by the way. That game all of a sudden looks far more winnable than it did in the preseason, in my humble opinion. But anyways, guys, you look at this game, and if you've paid attention to my content this week, you already know my pick in this. You already know my pick. I picked this as a win in the preseason, by the way, and I had a 31 to 28 final score. Now, South going to get to 31 points. I feel like at this point it might take a minor miracle, but that's what I had picked in the preseason. And just because I picked that in the preseason does not mean I can't change my pick or have a different pick. You know, obviously things change as we go throughout a season. And yes, Tennessee has looked very good at times offensively finding the answer at quarterback. And again, what Evans has done in the running game, they ran for like 470 yards last week, right? They've got capable bodies on the outside. Defensively, uh, Jeremy Banks at the linebacker position, they've got pretty solid players there. Again, they lost a lot, but they're doing enough defensively, especially against the running game, by the way. It'll be very tough, I think, for South Carolina to run the football tomorrow afternoon. But they're doing enough defensively to, like I said, sit right now three and two. But I look at this game, guys, and again, if you follow my content this week, sorry, I spoiled the surprise for you. I'm a big trust-your-gut guy when it comes to business, relationships, uh, decision-making of any kind. And so this falls into that category because I'll tell you this, guys. I know you've all become very accustomed to me giving it to you straight, spitting the facts, whatever. If I think we're going to lose, I'm going to tell you we're going to lose. Hey, I was probably the only one that picked Kentucky to beat South Carolina. Did I enjoy doing it? No, I did not. But I owe it to you as the consumer, as the listener, as someone who appreciates and tunes into our content and supports our content to be real with you. And I'm going to do that right here, right now as well. I'm going to be very real, very blunt, very honest with you. This is a Gamecocks football team that I've mentioned over and over and over again. It's an imperfect football team. It's a football team with a lot of issues. It's a football team that, Some of the answers you need are only going to be found in recruiting, right? It's a very, I've called it a ragtag bunch before, which again, is not meant to be derogatory or not meant to be disrespectful, but it just kind of is what it is in year one. Again, a battle of first-year head coaches. Josh Heupel on the Tennessee side, Shane Beamer on the South Carolina side. Shane Beamer still looking for his first ever SEC win as a coach, or as a head coach, I should say. But I'm a big trust your gut guy, ladies and gents. And I'll tell you what, as much as I've tried to talk myself out of it, I can't do so. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, South Carolina is beating Tennessee tomorrow. I've never been more sure of anything in my entire life. That might be a little strong, but you know what I'm saying. All week long, guys, again, I've been like, Chris, is this really going to be your pick? Like, why do you feel this way? Why do you think... And I understand what Tennessee did last week. I I get it. Everybody's riding their high horse on Tennessee, and everybody thinks, oh, Tennessee did this, they did that, whatever. Guys, let's not lose sight of the fact that Tennessee's got a slew of issues, and they beat a very, very bad Missouri team. Meanwhile, can South Carolina do enough offensively? The defense will be there. Even with R.J. Roderick missing the first half tomorrow, I think Jamar Brown, who played outside of that one play, played very, very well in that football game, by the way. Jamar Brown, Jalen Dickerson, Jalen Foster, they'll hold their own in the back end of that defense. 
Your defensive line's got to step up and contain the running game, as I talked about yesterday. And then offensively, again, is there any hope left for your offensive line? Can you run the football at all, or is this going to be a game where we say, hey, we got to throw it 50 times to have a chance to win. We just have to. We got to go with something that works. And right now, the running game ain't it. But again, guys, this has been a wacky series and all over the place series with some crazy games. I mean, let's look at last year, how nuts that was. You know, heartbreaking fashion at williams Bryce Stadium. I don't think this offense, though, as I mentioned earlier, is as far off as some people might think. Luke Doty is getting healthier and healthier and healthier as each week passes. And what an opportunity he's got tomorrow to get really, I would say, the first real big win of his South Carolina career. There's a lot of familiarity in this game as well with Shane Beamer, previously being on the Tennessee staff, Marcus Satterfield as well. So this is a big one, right? This is a big one. You got Vandy next week. You can get to five and two, guys, which I told you before, would be a dream start, a dream start. For the Shane Beamer era. Simply put, guys, I'm just not buying Tennessee yet. I'm not buying Tennessee as this great team. I'm not saying South Carolina's a great team, but they don't have to be a great team to beat Tennessee. They've just got to be better than them. And I think tomorrow they will. I think your defense will, again, just stay on brand, force a couple of uh, turnovers. I think they're going to put this offense in positions to be successful. They're going to give you every opportunity to win the football game. I'm a believer In Clayton White's defense, I think they'll play a fantastic game for you. Can you do enough offensively? I also think Beamer Ball, folks. I think Beamer Ball, and I even said this over the summer, but I think Beamer Ball shows up in this game, makes a game-changing play. You're riding your defense. Can your offense do enough? It won't be pretty. It will not be pretty tomorrow. If we've learned anything about this offense, it ain't going to be pretty the entire time for sure. But Luke Doty, With his effort, he's protecting the football. I think he'll do that again tomorrow. And I think South Carolina goes into Neyland Stadium against the odds, against all odds, despite what fans say, despite what Vegas says, 10 and a half. I tell you, South Carolina will march into Neyland Stadium tomorrow and get their first SEC win of the 2021 football season. And Shane Beamer, will get his first SEC win as a head coach. The Gamecocks take care of business on Rocky Top. Give me South Carolina 23, Tennessee 21. Again, guys, I think it's going to be a classic South Carolina Tennessee game. I think it's going to be a very close competitive game all the way down to the end. But like I told y'all, many of you ask, Chris, how, how are we going to move the ball? How are we going to do this? We... I've just got a feeling in my gut, man. I, I don't know what it is. I've literally tried to talk myself out of this all week. Like, Chris, are you, are you sure that's your pick? And also, oh, by the way, Tennessee's wearing all black uniforms for a noon game at home. Hammer the Gamecocks. Hammer the Carolina money line. Hammer the plus 10 and a half. Whatever you want to do. Hammer the under also, by the way. But I, I just, every time I look at this game, guys, and I understand our deficiencies, I understand our problems, I understand what, where we are lacking, I totally get that, but I'm just, number one, not sold on Tennessee. I'm a believer in this defense. I'm a believer in Shane Beamer and Pete Limbo that special teams will make its presence felt in this one. And again, I know your offense isn't great. I think Luke Doty, this is a really big one for him. Can your offensive line give you anything? They won't be great. And give credit to Tennessee. Their defensive front's pretty good. Again, they've been very good against the run this year. Right, Their defense is solid, but you'll do just enough. You don't have to be elite offensively to win tomorrow. You don't have to, but you just got to be just a little better than them. And I think tomorrow, guys, Tennessee, there's no way they can duplicate that performance from a week ago. Tennessee will return back to normal. They will look like mere mortals, and the Gamecocks will march into Neyland Stadium, guys, and get the W. I'm guaranteeing it against South Carolina 23, Tennessee 21. So, again, that's my pick. That's my prediction. Hey, surprise, surprise, in case you didn't hear me all week on Wednesday night when I actually guaranteed the Gamecocks to get the W, but trust your gut, folks. Trust your gut. That's what I'm feeling. Hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It is what it is, but – I, I just, I'm not sold on Tennessee, and I think the Gamecocks do have some things going for them. I don't think this team is as far off as some may think. 
Again, that's not to say they don't have problems and issues. And I'm not trying to sit here and sell you guys false hope that South Carolina's going eight and four this season. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But in this game tomorrow, call me crazy. I like the Gamecocks. Give me the Gamecocks 23 or 21 beating the Volunteers. Guys, again, that's going to do it all for me. I appreciate you all tuning in. Let me hear your predictions, by the way. How do you think the game is going to go on Rocky Top? Can South Carolina, am I crazy? Am I crazy? Have I, I don't know, drank too much Kool-Aid this week? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I'm, I'm surprised at myself that I'm picking the game, Cox, to be totally honest with you, but I'm feeling it, man, and I'm trusting my gut in this one. I'm, I'm not going to outsmart myself, whatever. If I go down, I go down my gut. It is what it is. But, again, want to hear your score predictions. How do you think this game will go? Also, guys, a quick reminder, watch party tomorrow in Somerville, South Carolina, the, game, the uh, Carolina Ale House location. In Somerville, tell them you're with TSUS. You'll get 10% off your entire order. That's food, drink, everything. And appreciate the fine folks at Carolina Ale House. But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it all for me, man. I'm fired up. I'm excited. If you're traveling to Knoxville, safe travels. If you're traveling to Somerville, we'll see you guys very, very soon. Hey, y'all take care. Have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend. And I'll leave you with this. Go Cox, beat Tennessee, and we'll talk to you on Monday. <laughs>